Hi all, it's Kate. I'm here to talk about um, what's in my pen case. As you can see, I have um, a few of my pen cases with me right here. And um, I'm going to go through them because it's time for me to um, sort through and see what I really need in here and what I don't need in here. I'm going to start with the blue one. Just because that's what I frequently um, use. And um, I sometimes just use this one. It just depends on the mood that I'm in. So I'm going to start taking some of this out right now. I did get a new set of Tombow dual tip brushes. And I'm not sure what colors I want. So I had just gone in and really kind of like put them all in here. But I know that all of them are going to come out at some point. I just wanted to show you this this bag because it really does hold a lot of stuff in it. It's called um, the Moving Option, and by its by Nomad, it's really kind of one of the best um, expandable pencil cases that are out there. I'm just going to show you what I have in there. I do, as I said, have a lot of stuff in here, and. Um, in and take everything out in this case I'm just gonna leave this in here um, I keep in extra eraser um, some white gouache some flags and some sticky notes I'm just gonna keep those in there in this main pocket right here what I usually carry with me is my favorite all-time favorite eraser this is from Faber Castell, and um, it's the Art Eraser. It really works very, very well. I like this because I can tell what I'm erasing really easily. So that goes in there. And these um, are some travel water brushes that I carry with in my Rut Ring Mechanical Pencil. I'll talk about in a second. But um, these are my water um travel water brushes i just got this um silver um voyager round and this is supposedly um a size eight but it's a um i think it's a little small for a size eight but i really do like this brush it's very very soft and um, it's made out of real hair. I did not know that when I bought it, or I probably wouldn't have because I tried to buy um, synthetic brushes. But this is really um, a very nice brush. I notice uh, some YouTubers do use this. I have to agree, this is a very nice brush. Although, to tell you the truth, I probably would not have bought it because it's a, um, it's a real hair brush. These are the um, brushes that I, too, end up using. These are um, my rosemary brushes. This is actually a mix of synthetic and um, hair. Um, as you can see, I probably, I closed it improperly last time. What I have to do is just um, put this in hot water and it will reactivate. I've done that some sometime. Not scalding water, but just enough hot water to keep the the bristles back together again. This by far is one of my favorite all-time mop brushes and I do um, use this quite a bit. I'm just going to keep this open because I will have to go in and wet it again. But these are the other uh, brushes that I do have from Rosemary and Company that I do love. I strongly recommend um, them very much. I have some brushes from Cheap Joe's and um, some other brands as well. But these Rosemary and Company brushes are extremely um, fantastic. I especially love this brush. It's, it's a dagger brush, and it helps me to keep lines when I'm doing some watercoloring. And um, this is just the rigor brush that I love. 
I just got this, so I wanted to incorporate it into some place. I have a feeling that this is going into my bullet journal. Let's go back to the case a little bit, and you can see that there's some um, holders in here, just this one, but this is really decep deceptionally a big area to store your pens in. And I do, um, for the last week, have carried all of this in here. And it's getting to be a little bit unwell unwelding, so I'm just gonna choose some of the things that I like, and I'm gonna talk to you about what I carry in here as I put things back. These things are self-explanatory. Um, these are my watercolors that I take with me everywhere I go. Uh, I have three of these <coughs> pocket palettes. This is the one that I made myself. I wanted to get an inscribed one. This is a little bit heavier than um, the Expeditionary um, palettes, but um, I really do like it. What I did is I put a magnet in the back of the pan area so I can uh, do the same things that I do with these two. And I put a um, piece of Yippo paper, and I actually do keep some other Yippo papers in here just in case I need a bigger mixing area. <clears throat> but I guess they fell out at some point and I did not replace them. But I'm going to tell you that <clears throat> these pans last quite a while. I mean, I was afraid that this wouldn't An error has occurred. cut out. I'm unable to answer your question. Um, Try again later. <clears throat> I was afraid that these wouldn't last me for an extended period of time, but they actually do. And um, what I do is this is a piece of leftover arch paper. So I put um, the color palette here. Um, as soon as I'm done with all of these colors, I will probably end up taking this apart and um, putting this into some type of order. Hey, Jamie, you wanna be in the video too? You gotta stand up over here. That's a good boy. So um, these are the colors in the, the other pans as well. This one um, is my first palette that I got, and these are the colors that I um, I started off with. Actually, no, this is my first palette, I'm sorry, because this started off with me getting the um, Daniel Smith Essential palette, which are these six, one, two, three, four, five, six colors, and then as I went along, I added the Moon Glow, and the cerulean um, so the um, cerulean blue and the transparent pilo and I just what I did is I just watched other youtubers and see what's in their primary palettes and I have to say that I will go ahead and kind of rearrange this and see what reds that I'm actually using and what colors I'm actually using and these are just um, more colors uh, some of these are the Jane Blundell colors and um, I really do like them and I added opera pink in here as well so these go into into here and they fit really really nicely in here so I carry a lot of fountain pens with me and um, I tend to like fine, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, medium and broad nib pens. And um, I end up over the last few weeks have uh, decided to go and use um, some other tips. And um, these Kukuno. Uh, pens by by Pilot have become my probably all-time favorite pens, and uh, this one is a, a fine tip. I really do enjoy this. And just to show you some other ones that I do carry, these are um, special editions, uh, Kumamano characters these are the two that they had out last year and they're also doing a, um, 
a Lamy Special Edition, and I end up getting those. My cat's fighting me for my pens, and he's being annoying. So, and this is a, a new one by uh, Kokodo, and it's a, in a demonstrator module. And here I have um, some really cool ink, and uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I do have a Con 70 in here. Um, there's a lot of people that saying that you can't use Con 70 for a cartridge in here, but you actually can, and it works very nicely. In fact, I have them in all of my Kokonot fountain pens. This is um, my Lamy that I carry with me. I really do love this one because I changed the nib out and I have um, a gold nib on here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it actually writes probably one of my smoothest writers that I do have. And um, coming in at a price of um, $39 for the body and the nib was $99. So all in, this is a um, $130 gold nib pen, and it's incredible. These two pens that I have here by Visconti, this is the Starry Night. This is in medium nib, and um, this is absolutely a beautiful writer as well, but it's not a gold nib. It's um, actually a steel nib, and uh, I paid, did pay... Um, $200 for this. I got it as a bottom shelf on Goulet pens, and I have to tell you that I'm totally in love with this pen. It goes with me at all times. It it pairs up nicely with my uh, my notebook. Hold on for a second. Okay, so um, after the Coconos, um, I do have um, my Viscontis, which I just showed you, and I just went ahead and um, put them in the in an, a different case because I'm realizing that the Salvador Dali is really kind of um, one of those rare pens, and I really shouldn't be uh, keeping them loosely in uh, this case. So I decided to just put them into this protective case. I have my vintage cross blue lapis. And I absolutely love this pen, and so I should really keep it in um, this pen case and just bring it in my bag. Um, I do tend to keep my rarer pens in cases like this. These are my handmade cases. This is a case by an, um, a company I'll put in the link below, Innovative Journaling. and. Um, this pen case is probably one of my favorite pen cases. So this gets my um, thumbs up for my really expensive pens. Um, these four pens are custom made pens by the Hooligan Pen Company. This is probably one of my favorite pens that he's made for me. And um, I absolutely love it, but I get so worried about taking this out because I have already lost one of um, these pens that he's made for me and um, I just don't want to lose another one so I keep it in this protective case and I very rarely take it out and just because I'm just so, so afraid that I'm going to lose them because they're very expensive um, to make um, handmade pens and this one right here is a pen by Sailor and it's in a rare wood and it's absolutely again it's probably an absolutely fantastic pen and um, it's 18 karat gold and uh, the nib writes like butter it's just a phenomenal writer but I don't use this every day because I'm afraid that I'll lose it so that's why I'm thinking that I really should be putting the um, the Visconti's in in a case by themselves so this is um, some of the more expensive pens that I do have in my collection. Also in this bag, I do have um, two pencils. One of them is my Rot Ring um, mechanical pencil that I've had now for quite a number of years. This is um, 
so this is a 0.5 and I don't have the um, the, the HB lead in here I just have regular um, soft lead in here it's um, rather a nice pen as I said I've had it for years and years and years and that just goes into the front of my bag another um, setup I have is I have some mechanical pencils I'm not going to put this in right now um, but this is just another little cute pencil I got from the Tokyo Pen Company and I just wanted to play around with it a little bit. This is a point, uh, point 0.5 millimeter. I haven't written it yet so I can't tell you you know how it is but I just thought it was a cute one to have around. This is my all-time favorite mechanical pencil. It's by Pentel and it's the um, side FX and this is in 0.5. I have one in 0.7 somewhere in this pile. And that goes in. And this is um, a white pencil that I find myself putting in my um, pen case. Just in case I need to go in and um, do some top shops when I'm, I'm doing some uh, drawings. These are my gel pens. Um, I do have two white gel pens. When I'm using this for watercolor, it really does come in handy. And I have two sizes. I have one in broad and this is in medium. They do have a new fine one, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get that or not. Um, I tend not to do fine pens, but I might get it just to try it out. This is my gold and silver just in time for uh, the the season. My two water brushes. I love Sharpie pens. I have this addiction for them. So I, I have to have at least one of them in my bag in black. They do make them in other sizes and other colors, but I tend to like this. This is my favorite. I do keep um, a Copic multi um, liner in my bag. This is in um, 0 0.5. I tend not to um, get along with anything that's um, smaller than the 0 0.5, but um, I am going to see if I can get a 0 0.3 again because I was so disillusioned with the 0 0.3 that I actually threw it away but I think I'm going to repurchase. I keep a small X-Acto knife in, in my kit just to um, cut things evenly. I also carry um, some brush pens. This is um, a black one and I am not sure of the brand for this one. I got this at the, my local um, art store and it has a bullet nib on one side and a very flexible very flexible brush ship on the other side I don't read um, Japanese so I don't know what the name of this um, this brush is but I would highly recommend it another favorite of mine is this Copic brush marker and um, it's not refillable. I got this in a um, art snacks when they were doing something at a local art store. And um, I absolutely am in love with this, this brush nip. It just keeps on going. It's really nice and juicy and wet. I love it. Absolutely love it. Again, this is my... Um, point oh this is another point five I have a I have a point seven somewhere around here I'm not going to put that back in because it's redundant at this point but these are my new markers that I've gotten and um, I've been enjoying them for my bullet journal 
I was hesitant about getting them because um, I already have my Copics. Why do I need another type of brush when I do have all those beautiful Copic markers? But the one thing about the Copic markers is that if you're using them in Ontomo River paper, it just bleeds through. And these sometimes ghost, but they don't bleed. And I really have been enjoying them, especially when I'm doing um, my color coding for the day. So I really enjoy these. But I do have to um, trim down my selection of ones that I'm going to carry with me on my daily basis. I do use the pink. The red, the darker purple, this blue is just too weak, so I'm opting to get another deeper color blue. So I've decided to take this out of my pen case. I want a darker brown. I'm going to go for this, um, this color green. And... Um, I'm going to go for this yellow and orange, and I'm just going to keep those at home, and I'm just going to keep those. As you can see, I do, this is starting to fill up quite a bit, but what I love about it is I still can close the case, and I'm going to put the, um, the travel brushes in after. I did want to show you what's in my other pen cases that I do sometimes bring with me to, to work and um, I'm just going to empty them out here so you can see what I carry with me. This again has some nice little pockets in it and in this one I carry a pencil sharpener, extra lead, this is um, 0.7 millimeter lead and I have um, some pens that I uh, pencils that I fill up with it and I have a, a clip here it's really a nice bag I can't read this name it's either her light or uh, Lertz or something or another I would have to go on to jet pen to see um, what the name of it is um, and I can put that down in the comments below. So let's see what I have in this case. Bring it down to you. So I have different whites. Um, I have an acrylic white. I have a Posca medium size. And I have a Posca um, small. And I have a few other whites that I keep with me. Um, I really do like using these, especially when I'm doing my watercoloring. So those go back in here. I lost my other um, Faber-Castell eraser, so I keep an extra one in my bag. Um, I don't use this often, so I'm gonna just take this out for now to figure out what I want to do with it. I also keep um, an assortment of erasers in here. Um, I do have one more eraser. It looks like I don't know what happened to it, but this is um, a really nice eraser. It's by Tombow. And it's quite small and it allows you to get into small places so you can erase very small details. This is my um, 0.7 mechanical pencil. Again, I really do love these. I, I uh, The side loading is really helpful when you um, need to make the lead a little bit larger and it just does a great job with that. This is an old um, water brush that I have. I don't know why I still carry it in there, but I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in there. Although, no, because I'm, I'm feeling that it's leaking a little bit, so I'm going to just take that out. 
This one is um, a Jinhao 159, but I put a um, I put a music nib on it, and I, I love this pen. Now um, I do use this quite a bit in my journal, so that goes back in. And I do have some microns. This is the smallest micron that I do have, and this is at uh, zero one. And this is um, zero five. This is in black. They're both in black. I do carry a metallic gold marker with me. Um, I'm going to talk about this later, but this is coming out of my um, bag, and I'll tell you in a minute why when I open up my other pen case. This is just some pencils that I do carry with me. This is um, a graphite, and this is um, another permanent marker, a permanent color, and this is in luminance. I really do like um, this this um, red color a lot, so I do carry with me when I'm, you know, just doing some quick sketching. And this is the third pen case that I carry. This is not one of my favorite pen cases, but it really kind of holds a lot. I used to have much more than I do have in it now. And this has really kind of been my catch-all for stuff that I may use, but I really don't use, but I like to use, but I want to use. So this is really kind of the confusing kind of pencil case that I do carry with me. Starting with these two. These are custom-made um, pencil holders. These are in 5 millimeter size. I have red in one, and I have just a regular graphite in another. I do like these, and I love the girth on them. I love how they feel in my, my hand. I just am, um, don't find myself using them as much as I thought. Uh, these were custom-made. Um, and I can put a link to where I got them down below. And uh, they were like $50 a piece. But I really love how thick and chunky they are. If they made um, pencil holders that held like a 7.7 millimeter or 0.5 millimeter, um, I would definitely use them a lot more than, than this. Then I carry... A water brush with me in here. I do tend to like these water brushes. Let's see if they have this is the Pentel Aqua brush, which I really do like. I have a couple of them in in boxes. I do um, like the feel of this, and I, it seems like it controls water a little bit more than some of the other brands. And this is um, another favorite brand. This is by Niji. And let's see if I can get this in focus. Okay, it just says push on it. How about over here? This is by Kuritaki. And this is also one of my other favorite um, water brushes. So these are two of my favorite water brushes. I have them everywhere in my house. And just in case I go through them. I do carry Sharpie fine markers. I do love them in different colors. I have an addiction to them. In fact, I have a whole pen case in here and I have um, them in probably every imaginable color that you can think of in here another micron this is a, a brush micron and this is in pink it actually really white writes very very well one of my favorites and Alma's glue stick and again um these right here, these uh, Crane Diach pencils are absolutely beautiful to write with. Uh, I like this in white, and I'm probably going to reduce the number of um, white pencils that I have and just go down to this one because I don't need five or six of them when I go out. This is the blue, and I again, I, my two favorite um, colors to 
work with are the blue and the um, red. I carry this compass with me because I do, you know, draw circles at some point. And um, here's my other pencil. And I wanted to talk to you about these. These are a fantastic concept. They're multiple. They carry eight different lead types. And I have all of them. I have all of the leads. There's 16 different color leads, and I, and I have all of them in this, this case. Now, the problem with um, these leads, and I've used this, these now for probably about a good year and a half, if not two years, and um, I can't remember which one is the, made for the uh, American consumers and which one is made for the Japanese consumers. I have a love-hate relationship with these because I love the colors and I do use these in my bullet journals, but I'm thinking about taking them out of my collection altogether because although they're fantastic writers, they get caught up. And right now, I can't tell what lead I'm on when I turn this. So even though it suggests that I'm on the blue, I'm actually on a different color altogether. And um, sometimes I have difficulty getting it out. It looks like it's a green. It's on the green. So um, I've taken these apart several times, and I had friends that are more mechanical than I am take them apart, and they still are, are just so problematic that um, right now it's not even moved. It's not even moving. It's not even budging. And if the other one is like that as well, so I'm just going to go ahead and probably take these out of the collection. So, um, by this indicator, I should be like on the green, but I'm not, I'm on orange. So it's really difficult for me to figure out the colors. I would now have to go back and count, make sure they have it in the right place. But although I love the idea, I love the concept, I love the colors because I was thinking, you know, I would carry just two of these and carry 16 colors with me all the time. That it would be just fantastic, especially if I'm gonna do something, a color, coloring book or my bullet journal or things like that. So I was really quite disappointed with this. And um, that's, and I just wanted to show you another one last pen case. This is um, by Lilith, Lilith, or I can't, pronounce it very well. It's probably um, another favorite of mine. I uh, love this so much that I bought one for my mom. This is filled with all of my Lammies. And I do have supplies in here. And, and go figure, I do have some more water brushes in here. And um, mechanical pencils and, and stuff like that. This holds a lot. And it's deceptic, deceiving from the outside. But I can get all of these... Um, Lammy fountain pens in here, and I actually can probably get at least one more in here. But these are all of my Lammies that I have. Well, not all of my Lammies that I have. I have a few others that I, I do use on a regular basis. And um, but um, this is really cool. I don't take this out often, but um, when I do, I do enjoy it. I have some more pen cases around. But those are my primary pen cases, and I hope you have a great day.